Hey everybody, welcome to System Test 33. So later on in this video we're going to do the first test ever of the Siemens PE11T smoke detector that's installed on my SXLEX system. But before we get to that I wanted to share some good news regarding the two panels you see here in the video, the SXLEX and the Autopulse 2000. So as you can tell by the two green indicator LEDs and no trouble LEDs, I now have standby uh, SLA batteries installed in both of these panels. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Taking a look at the bottom of the SXLEX cabinet, you can see we have two KSIL branded batteries. Both of these are 12 volt, 7 amp hour SLAs. And uh, I've had the uh, single 12 volt SLA in the DMP panel for a while because that one uh, came with the panel when it got removed from a building. These batteries actually came out of a demolition project that I just did on Monday, and I'm going to be having some uh, videos on the equipment that I removed from uh, that building, but these batteries were just an added bonus. Um, and then I also have two PowerSonic batteries installed over in the Ansel Auto Pulse 2000. But we're going to move right along and get to the system test part of this video. So let's go take a look at the devices. For the pulse stations today we have two FCI MS series devices. Over on the left hand side we have your standard old FCI MS6 single action pulse station. Over on the right hand side this is an FCI MS2 pulse station that has been rebranded by Fenwall and uh, <laughs> if you know of Fenwall's model numbers they're uh, pretty much a mouthful. So this is a Fenwall 29-3200 zero zero dash two eight one uh, dual action pull station so although the pull stations are nice and all in this video we're finally going to get an opportunity to test out the Siemens Cerberus Pyrotronics PE-11T smoke detector that's been mounted above the panel for a while and kinda hasn't made its way into the uh, system test videos yet but like I said at the beginning of the video that's going to change today so this is a combination photoelectric and thermal heat detector and uh, it's a two-wire device. It's exclusive to the uh, Siemens Cerberus Pyrotronics branded devices and this is actually a really uh, expensive smoke detector but uh, MSJ191961 was kind enough to give me a really good deal on three of these so I have a couple for backup um, probably a couple months ago now. So we're going to finally get a chance to uh, show this thing off today. So on to the notification appliances. So over on the NAC2 spot today we have a Gentex Commander 3 remote strobe. This is a multi candela strobe and it is currently set on 15 candela. So over on the NAC1 spot we have another first for my system test videos which is the inclusion of a chime rather than a standard uh, electronic or electric mechanical horn. So this is an EST Genesis model G1RF-C chime and this is currently set on vibrating chime which uh, basically means that it'll pulse out one of the chime noises uh, on exactly one second intervals and it's actually kind of interesting because this keeps uh, very good time with the uh, one second flash uh, pulses of the Gentex Commander 3 strobe so that'll be interesting to look at when we move back over to the smoke detector and set this uh, system off in a minute or two. So now we're back over at the PE11T detector and we're ready to start the test. Now before I get started on this I do want to say I know I have a lot of younger hobbyists who watch my videos and this doesn't just go for you know my younger viewers this goes for anybody. Um, I would ask that uh, you don't try to attempt what you're going to see me do in this video. I'm going to be using a live flame uh, and activating a candle, which then I'll blow out to generate the smoke, which should hopefully activate the uh, photoelectric sensor in this detector. Um, I do have a couple safety precautions that I'm going to be using. I do have my uh, safety goggles here, or they're around here somewhere. Um, a little tray to put the candle in afterwards in addition to a fire extinguisher in case something were to go wrong but like I said if you are a younger viewer and you'd like to do this have a parent help you or someone who is older and experienced and will be able to do this safely without having to risk uh, damaging your property or home or putting anybody at risk so with that being said I'm gonna go ahead and uh, test out the smoke detector 
and start the test. So we're going to go ahead and silence that. I'll reach over and silence these keypads. So as you saw, it took a while to activate, but now we finally do have the uh, red LED on the detector flashing, showing that it's in the alarm condition. I'll have to look back at the video later. I didn't think that uh, there was alarm verification on this zone, but it uh, certainly seemed like it because I think the red LED started flashing far before the uh, system went into alarm. So we're going to go ahead and move down to one of the pull stations and activate the system again like I normally do. So I actually have another system test coming up pretty soon that's going to be using uh, actual FCI MS2 pull stations like the Fenwall pull station I have put up. So for today's test we're going to use the MS6. So here we go. I went ahead and pulled the uh, Fenwall pull station just for fun. Alright, now we'll go ahead and silence that. So now I got myself two pull stations to reset. Start with the MS6. And then the MS2 Funwall rebrand. And I do have several of these for sale on eBay if anybody uh, watching this video is interested. So now that I've given the smoke detector a few minutes to air out, we're going to go ahead and reset the system. Although, uh, since I use the chime, it's okay if it re-alarms, because that's not too bad to listen to. It's actually why I chose the device for this test. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, from now on we don't have to wait for the uh, battery trouble to show back up, because the uh, batteries are finally in the panel. That's pretty nice, because it does get rid of the uh, annoying number and the little flashing LED segment they used to constantly be all over the videos before I uh, did that 
So now we're gonna head over to the keypad and reset the DMP system. So as always, last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and reset the DMP XR500. So that's all the system test content I have planned today. Make sure you guys hit that like button, leave me a comment, and uh, subscribe to keep up to date on my future videos. So thank you guys for watching.